Howdy folks, welcome back to the 45 Home Lab YouTube channel. I'm Zach Perry, back with another video. This time we're going to be covering Portainer and installing it on this little fella here, a home client. We're going to split this up into two parts today. It's going to be more of an intro, so covering a few things. So what's going to be on for the docket for today is what is Portainer. We're going to be going over the hardware in the home client. We'll go over the install process from installing Docker to getting Portainer itself set up and using Docker Compose, verifying the install, and navigating to the Portainer web UI. So what is Portainer? So Portainer, it's a lightweight management UI that lets you easily manage your Docker containers, images, networks, and volumes. So instead of relying solely on the Docker CLI, Portainer gives you a visual interface to monitor your environment, deploy new containers, and check logs. It's popular because it makes managing container workflows a breeze. You don't have to memorize Docker commands. You get immediate visibility into your container's health. It supports Docker standalone setup, Swarm, Kubernetes, clusters. Uh, in a nutshell, Portainer helps you spend less time troubleshooting and more time building. Now, the hardware in the home client. So this has a little be bit of a beefy setup there. Before we jump into the install, let's quickly cover the hardware I'm going to be using for this demo. So the home client, it's a single board computer. It's pre-installed with Rocky Linux, but you can choose from a list of OSs on our store, or you can ship it with a blank OS. It has an extremely small footprint, making it great to, you know, fit on your TV stand or a desk. It's fanless, so it's whisper quiet, unobtrusive, and it has a small form factor. So it has an Intel 97 CPU, 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM, a 500 gig SATA SSD for Docker volumes and configs, two 2.5 gig RJ45s, and the OS is Ubuntu 22 LTS or long-term support. Now you don't need anything too beefy to run Portainer. It's extremely lightweight. If you have a machine with at least two gigs of RAM and a few gigs of storage, you're good to go. Of course, depending on your plan on deploying, your mileage may vary. Now, installing Docker and setting up Portainer with Docker Compose. Let's walk step by step through the install process. We'll first need to get everything Docker related installed and finally spin up Portainer itself. If you already have Docker up and running, you can skip to this timestamp. Now, we're going to be using the official Portainer documentation to install Docker CE since this is a fresh install and I didn't already have uh, it ahead of time. So let's click here and get the install for Docker. So we'll need to set up Docker app repo. Thankfully, it's just a one-liner that we can copy and paste to our terminal. Now that we have that, we can pull down our Docker packages, those being Docker CE. This is the main Docker engine that actually runs your containers, Docker CE CLI. These are the command line tools you use to control, control Docker from the terminal. Container IO, this is the core runtime behind Docker that handles downloading images and starting containers. Docker Build X plugin. This plugin lets you build more advanced images, including ones that work on multiple platforms. Docker Compose plugin. So this makes it easy to launch and manage multiple container apps using a simple YAML file or files. Now, if you don't want to have to run sudo every time you run a Docker command, you'll create a Docker group. As we can see here, it's already been created. Then we'll add our current user to that group. You'll need to exit the session log and log back in again for this to take effect. Then, if everything's installed correctly, you can verify by running docker run hello-world. This is up there for me when I'm trying to unmount a directory. It's busy and I spend an embarrassing amount of time realizing that, you know, I'm in the directory, I'm trying to unmount in another terminal and sometimes in the same terminal. <laughs> but with that out of the way, we can go back to installing Portainer. The Portainer docs provide a docker run command to install it. Personally, I prefer using docker compose files. Both are valid, but that's just my preference. So I've gone ahead and made a folder in my opt slash containers folder called container and inside is my Docker Compose YAML. So this YAML file contains the LTS long-term support image for Portainer. I fixed container name to make sure running Docker command is easier instead of using the randomly generated name. Auto restart, so if you need to troubleshoot Docker itself, for instance, the and restart the service, Portainer will also restart. Port mapping for the web UI, access to Docker via the Docker socket, a volume to persist its data, 
Now, with that out of the way, you'll save and quit and now run docker compose up dash D, then docker PS, and we should see our container healthy and ready to access at your host IP port 9000. Mine's slightly different because I'm using AdGuard and traffic to allow me to resolve via host name. But now that we have portainer up, what can we actually do with it? Well, we can get into what it's meant to do, and that's easily deploying and managing containers. Let's get familiar with our web UI. We can see our inventory at a glance, things like our current resource allocation, images, network stacks, volumes, and more. So we can click on each one of these to get a more in-depth uh, view of the contents, but we won't get too far into that in this video. We'll save that for the next one. Another thing to mention is that Portainer is especially great if you have multiple servers running containers and want to manage them all from a single instance. While looking through things, the first thing I realized was, was that there weren't too many templates to choose from that interested me. So I decided to add this GitHub repo that has 500 plus templates. We'll throw it in the description, but be sure to do your own research before deploying anything. Now that we have hundreds and hundreds of templates to choose from, I think we're in a good state. So we're gonna stop here for today. And in the next video, we'll deploy some containers and stacks in Portainer. We're gonna add my other server that isn't running Portainer to this instance so we can manage everything easily using Portainer Agent. Managing containers in Portainer itself, so that way there, we're out of the CLI. We're gonna find out how many and what kind of containers we can run on our home client before it starts to experience resource exhaustion, because why not? So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. If you wanna see everything we have on offer, head over to the 45homelab.com store. We also have socials listed below. I'll see you all in the next time for Portainer Video 2, Electric Boogaloo. Have a good one, folks.